Good morning. It's good to see you all this morning. I want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. What a beautiful day it is that we're able to see another beautiful day. God has rescued us from death again. And for that, we ought to be grateful and we ought to be thankful. So let's go to God in prayer at this time. Lord, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to see another beautiful day. An awesome God you are. We're so humbled to be in your presence. We thank you for allowing us to um, have the things that you have given us. And we pray that we never take it for granted. We thank you for your son who died on the cross for our sins, that we're able to have a chance for a home with you in the end. Father, we thank you so much for loving us and raining your grace and your mercy upon us. And again, Father, we just pray that we don't take that for granted. We ask that you be with those who are sick, those who have lost loved ones, and those who are currently on the road traveling, those who are dealing with uh, addictions and dealing with anxiety, depression, mental health issues. Please be with those individuals, Father. We ask that you also be with our fellow leaders in this world. Uh, we pray that they look to you for all answers, that your name will be glorified and not them glorifying themselves. We pray, Father, that you be with us individually um, as we live out our purpose and assignment that you have given us. And we also pray for, we pray for each other collectively um, as we all learn how to work together uh, to get to the place that we all would like to go. And that's to be at home with you, spend eternity with you. So we thank you and we love you. Pray that this word that will be given uh, today uh, will impact at least one person's life um, and that that person if they have not obeyed your word today will obey it before it's too late and we pray father that um, we do our very best uh, to make you proud in everything that we do we love you and we thank you in all things in jesus name we do pray amen thank you guys again for joining me this morning if you can please share this video share this video not for my sake uh, but for the sake of others, right? We want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to hear the word of God. They may not walk into the building where a place of worship, but they may turn on their phone and uh, listen to a video like this, which will help them uh, get closer to God. So any kind of way that we can get the word of God out to people, let's make sure that we do it. And if all you have to do is to share a video, you never know that your share just might save someone's life and they may and their obedience to god just might save their souls so again we all have a responsibility we all have a responsibility to spread the word of god you may not be able to teach it and that's fine but you can share and only take a few seconds so please don't miss the opportunity of sharing the word of god to the people that i cannot connect with but you can don't miss that opportunity today of sharing the word of God, whether it's through this video or something else, share the word of God, all right? Now the rest is on you, on what you do, because we're all gonna have to give an account when we're no longer here. So let's keep that in mind. So the first thing we wanna do for those of us who are still at home and we're partaking of the Lord's Supper at home, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 30, the Bible says, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. Let's keep this in mind as we partake of the Lord's Supper that we're doing it in a way that is according to the scriptures that will glorify God. And it's not just as a common meal and we'll glorify ourselves. All right, so let's keep that in mind. So today I wanna to talk about what um, I, I paid a lot of attention to uh, even more. So I've heard this before, 
uh, but it really hit me this week um, on a statement that was said, um, and, and I identify it almost as a wasted want, a wasted want. Now, we know that there is a difference between a want and a need, a want and a need. And just think about it, if we got all the things that we wanted, man, we wouldn't appreciate the things that we really needed, now would we? Yeah, only you can answer that question. Only God really knows the truth. So be real with yourself because God knows the answer, right? I remember there's a lot of things growing up that I wanted and still want till this day, but not as strong as I used to because of my understanding of how life operates. And I know, you know, there's a lot of things that are not meant for me to have. Now, across the board, I would, I would bet that probably over 90%, just to be fair, over 90% of people, if they had an opportunity to see what it's like to have a million dollars, they would want a million dollars. Who wouldn't want a million dollars to do what we wanted to do right but there's a reason why we don't have a million dollars right you and i don't have a million dollars okay and if you do congratulations uh, but for most of us we don't have a million dollars god knows that that's not part of his plan and that's on his needs list for us just think about it he knows that as good as we think that we are he knows that if we had a million dollars more than likely he wouldn't get the glory. Bottom line, I mean, that's what it's all about. God gives us things for us to, uh, to where he knows that we have a greater opportunity of giving him the glory. And a million dollars for most of us, he knows for the most part that he may not, or he, we, he won't get the glory from most of us because of what we will do with that $1 million. So across the board, you know, we would all want a lot of things, but if it's not on God's needs list, it's a wasted one. And over during the week, I was watching a morning show and they were highlighting the mothers um, this week. And in one particular uh, story, this lady, she, um, she was uh, driving, she had her child in the back, very young child, and she got to the, to the stoplight. And when she got to the stoplight, she realized that her uh, tank was on E. And she, she was a distance away from getting gas. And she realized, hey, I need to get some gas. But when she checked her account at the light, right, she realized she only had a dollar and 37 cents left in her account. And she was wondering, man, what am I going to do? But one of the other things that she said was she, she said that I don't want my child to have to experience this. Now, we've heard that before. Many of us have said that of what we want for our children or what we want for ourselves. And that really stuck with me when she said that. She does not want her child to have to go through what she was going through during that time. Hmm. So do you think our wants for ourselves and others like our children interfere with God's needs for us? That's the question. Our wants for ourselves or even our children, for those of us who have children or are guardians of children or whatever, interferes with God's needs for us. How many times have you said or heard someone say, I want what's best for my child. I want us to really emphasize on the questions and statements that focus on the wants and the needs. Or I want my child to have a better life, a life that was better than mine. How many times have we heard that? Remember, here the want is all about the want, what we want for ourselves or for our children. Oh, how about this statement? My child should not have to go through what I went through. I don't want that for my child. Remember, it's all about the want, right? So are we adults, parents, 
Are we the ones who solely determine the needs of ourselves and our loved ones and disguising them as wants? Let me ask that again. Are we the ones who are solely determining the needs of ourselves and our loved ones and disguising them as wants? You know, we can, we can say what we want for a child, but in actuality, do we really want that for ourselves more than the child? No offense to parents who go above and beyond for a child who is celebrating their first birthday. They will get, uh, uh, you know, those, uh, those blow up things where they, you know, the slides and everything. I forgot what they call them, but y'all know what I'm talking about. They will get the big slides. They will have all the food, you know, they will go all out decorations and everything. This child is one years old and will not remember the birthday. That's the husband in me, okay? <laughs> That's the husband in me speaking right now. I'm like, you spending all this money on a child that is one years old that will not remember this one year old birthday. But yet we would say that this child needs this to celebrate it. The child is one. All he wants is to be changed, to be hugged, and to be fed. Okay? That's just the husband in me. All right? Does the child really need that? I'm just saying. Or is it something that we want the child to have? Think about that. If we are so busy trying to give ourselves and our children something that is not on God's need list, are we helping them or even ourselves to draw closer to God? Because in the end, listen, we're here to draw closer to God. <clears throat> we are representatives of the kingdom. All right. We're representatives, hands down. If we are believers, all right, we are believers, not just believe but if we are believers people who are putting god's word into action then we know that we are representing the kingdom right and later on we'll talk about the believers and the and those who believe that's a different ball game man we got to be careful those who believe and those who are believers Again, if we're so busy trying to give ourselves and our children something that is not on God's need list, are we helping them or even ourselves to draw closer to God? We have to be careful of the wasted want compared to God's need. If our wants are not parallel to God's need, it's a wasted want. Do you know? that before we were even thought of that God had a plan for us. Now, as far as I know, this is vacation time that's coming up during summertime, right? And as many of us plan to go to a designated location, it's one thing of defining where you're going. It's another thing to talk about what are you going to need when you go to that designated location? right? Number one, you're going to have to have some money. Transportation, you got to eat. So you got to take care of those needs before you even consider going to that place. Am I right about it? We have to have a plan before we go on vacation of what it is that we need before we go. God has a plan for us before we was even created. God knew what we needed while we were here. But our needs can be overshadowed by our wants. God said he was going to supply all our needs. Philippians 4, 19. He said that. He said, I will supply all of your needs according to my riches. So before we was even born, God already mapped it out. You know, on this walk with, you know, on this walk in life, on this walk with him, God got us covered. It may not look the way that we want it to look, but God got us covered. 
Matthew 6 talks about how he provides for the birds. He provides for the animals. He provides for the land. We're greater than them. God provides for us, even though it may look uncomfortable, he still provides for us. Moses, think about this. When we're talking about a want, a wasted want compared to God's need, Moses did not want to go to Pharaoh to ask Pharaoh to let the people go according to what God was instructing Pharaoh to do. I mean, yeah, instructing Moses to do, to get Pharaoh to do. Moses was trying, he was like, Lord, I'm not a good speaker. He's like, hey, take, take Aaron with you. Get on over there. Because God's need was greater than Moses's want. Jonah, Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. He was very fearful of that. But God's need for Jonah to go there was greater than Jonah's want. And so he was redirected and he wound up doing what God needed him to do anyway. How about David? Now, David's want got him in trouble. David's want, his lust for Bathsheba, was not on God's needs list. David's want to have Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, killed was not on God's needs list. Therefore, he dealt with the consequences. But God's need for David to continue on living a life that he already knew that he was going to live was greater than David's want. How about Joseph and his brothers? Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery. But before they sold him into slavery, they wanted to kill him. But I believe it was Reuben who said, no, nah, don't kill him. We'll just sell him. And so the want for the brothers to kill him was nowhere near the need that God needed for Joseph to stay alive and to allow his glory to be shown when his brothers came to him in need in the end. Joseph went into the pit where he was taken up by those who brought him into slavery. Joseph went into prison because he was lied upon. And from that point, being that he was an interpreter of dreams, he was second in command in the palace. So from the pit to the prison to the palace, God's need for him to still be alive was greater than the wants for Joseph brothers who sold him into slavery. Saul, in the book of Acts, before he became Paul, he wanted to persecute the church to the fullest. He took part in Christians losing their lives. But God's need for Saul was greater than Saul's want to persecute the church. Therefore, Saul made a commitment and he obeyed the word of God after he had a conversation with Jesus, or as the song would say, just a little talk with Jesus. Saul's want was not parallel to God's need. And God said himself, as he spoke to Ananias, I believe it was, to go and speak to Saul. And Ananias heard about Saul and he was like, hey, I don't know if I wanna to talk to him. Now God said, listen, you need to do this because I want him to suffer for my sake. Read your Bible, it's there. And Satan, Satan wanted to kill Christ and it all be done. Well, we know that wasn't parallel with God's need. That even though the physical, the physical aspect of Christ was no longer here, the spirit lives forever. The soul lives forever. That was part of God's plan before this world was even created. God knew the answer. We can't put ourselves in the position of a wasted want. And a wasted want is a want that is not parallel with God's need. Doesn't matter how much we want for someone else, right? We've seen that before, especially family members. We could want 
it's so much for a family member who just don't want to do right. But if our want and their want is not parallel with God's need, it doesn't matter. It's a wasted want. I can't want it enough for you if you don't want it for yourself. Plus, that want has to be parallel with the word of God. That's why we read the word of God today. That's why we've learned from the word of God today because there were many people who wanted to do things like Pharaoh. Pharaoh wanted to keep God's people in bondage. It wasn't parallel with God's need. They got to go. You see what I'm saying? All the ones who were against God and their wants did not prevail over God, right? I mean, even Moses himself, when God told him to strike, uh, to speak to the rock, and he struck the rock two times for water to come out, the water came out. But the need, God's need, was greater than the want. Moses allowed his emotions to get the best of him, and he did what he wanted to do. He, all he had to do was speak to the rock. Moses was so, Moses was so frustrated with, with God's people, he, he hit the rock. Therefore, his disobedience and his want kept him out of the promised land. So God's need is greater than our want, which I call a wasted want. We cannot want something that is not on God's needs list. I'm just saying. So how do you know when it's parallel to God's needs list? I can't really answer that question. That just comes through time. And we've all experienced at this point where we are right now that we saw what God blessed us with was a need compared to our want. There are many things that we ask for. Many of us have went to job interviews to get a, to a certain job, but we didn't get the job that we wanted. But God gave us the job that we needed because all in all, it's not necessarily about the dream job. It's about the, getting the tools to be able to provide for our families, give back a portion unto God, and to help out those who are in need. So it may not be with that company that you wanted, but he still gave you a job to be able to utilize the tools or the, the finances to still take care of the things we need to take care of while we're here. We got to be careful and not confuse the fact that God is not listening to us. God is not hearing us. Uh, we say all these different things because we didn't get what we wanted. Remember, God is going to supply all of our needs. He didn't say it's going to look like this or that. He said he's going to supply all our needs. And for those of us who are parents, don't we do the same thing to our children? You know, many of us who, you know, our children are asked for certain things and we don't give them exactly what they want, but we give them what they need. You know, if a child wants a, I'm exaggerating here, a $3,000 cell phone, but we give them one that's less than that and is not the latest model, but it still does what the cell phone is supposed to do, God does the same thing for us. He's gonna make sure that our needs are taken care of because God is not a liar. And if he said he's going to supply our needs, he's going to supply our needs, but he's going to do it his way. He's going to do it his way. We got to be careful that we don't have a wasted want. And listen, I get it. You know, for the mom who said, you know, $1.37 in the bank, I don't want my child to experience, you know, what she went through. So she worked hard and, and she put herself in a position to where she uh, did very well educational wise and providing for her child. I get it. That's great. Fantastic. Congratulations. God helped her through that whole process. It wasn't all her. It was God who helped her through that whole process. And he supplied all of her needs in order for her to get to where she was going. Now, what she did with that, that was on her, but God supplied her needs. And hopefully she still had that same mentality of not only helping out or looking out for her child, but also others as well, because that's very important when we're talking about our want that is parallel with God's need. If it's not parallel, it's a wasted want. Think about it, okay? So many of us, I get it, that many parents do not want their children to suffer. I've heard many times that 
you know, parents say, I don't want my children to go through what I went through. And when you really look at that statement, when you really listen to it, they're pretty much saying, I don't want them to suffer like I had to suffer. Newsflash people is part of life. We are gonna suffer, we can't run from it. The question is, are we gonna suffer with God or without God? And the worst thing that we can do is not allow our children to go through the journey of life and working for whatever it is that they have to receive. And sometimes it's gonna be hard, whether you know we have anything to do with it or not, it's going to be hard. So to take the suffering, to take the journey away from our children is a disservice to our children. It's a disservice to us. If we're thinking that we're putting ourselves in a position to where we're making life easier for ourselves, we are hurting our own selves because we cannot run from suffering. That is part of our human and spiritual development. We gotta be real with this. Our want, again, if our want not to suffer is so strong, but is not parallel with God's need. It's a wasted want. And so what happens is when those things actually happen over and over and over again, which it will, it's just a matter of what level of suffering you're going to experience. Then you start to question God. Then you start to doubt God and your questioning and your doubting could potentially lead you to disobedience. And that's the same thing that happened to many individuals we read about in the Bible. They questioned, they doubted, they disobeyed because their want was greater than God's need. Therefore, if it wasn't on God's need list, it was a wasted want. You know, what if we received everything we wanted? Come on now. What if our children didn't go through the trials and the tribulations of life? Would they really understand how to deal with life? Think about it. If we just made, because many parents do do this, and you may be one of them, all right? Hey, this is this is no, this is, I ain't trying to be offensive here. I'm just being real. Because it's not part of God's spiritual development for us if we're pacifying each other, we're pacifying ourselves, and we're creating a life that's not reality for our children. Suffering is part of life. If we got everything we wanted, then we would not appreciate the experience of God's need for us. Plus, God knows we wouldn't glorify, we wouldn't glorify him. We'll only glorify ourselves and say, I did it. I'm the reason why that child is X, Y, and Z. No, it's not. No, it's not. You played a part in it. But just remember, God had a plan for us and for our children before they were even born. God is just waiting for us to catch up to what he already knows. God wants us to be focused on eternal and not the things of the world that are temporal. And the things that we want are more temporal than they are eternal. There's nobody asking to an extent for more patience, more kindness, more long suffering. You know what I mean? More forbearance, more, yeah, more love, no, more gentleness, long suffering. How many times you hear people ask for that? How many people say that they want to have those things more the fruit of the spirit, Galatians 5, 22. No, because that's not, that's not the things that we can really show off, right? And people can see, no, we don't ask for that. We'll allow ourselves to be deceived and think that the amount of money we make, the, the things that we possess and all these things that we striving for is what will determine our happiness and our closeness to God. And it's not. The Bible does not even talk about that. That's our want. And if our want is not parallel with God's need, it's a wasted want. It's a wasted want. If we want our children not to suffer, 
if we don't want to suffer in life to deal with how to deal with our emotions, how to be a human being, if we want that more, then what God has in store for us in helping us be better individuals and we have to go through some suffering, it's a wasted want. And trust me, whatever God's plan is, it will not fail. You can try to work around the system all you want, but you will lose every time because God didn't create you to come up with a new system, to come up with a new plan. His plan and his system is perfect. And we're not. All we have to do is comply, to submit, to be obedient to his plan. Then we can appreciate the needs that he have in store for us. Listen, we're going to suffer. Whether you want to agree with it or not, you're going to suffer. You're either going to suffer with him or you're going to suffer without him. The Bible says in 1 Peter 4 and 12 through 14, dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of the glory and of God rests on you. First Peter 4, 12 through 14. We're going to suffer. We cannot take that away. So in our attempt to make life better for us, the only way that we can make life better for ourselves is to comply, to submit, and to be obedient to God's word, understanding that we are going to suffer. Let's suffer for Christ's sake. And let's not be deceived by what Satan wants. Satan wants us to feel good and create an atmosphere that suffering is bad. Everybody we read about suffered. <clears throat> they suffer for God's sake. They suffer. We're no different than they are. So if we believe what men and women say about what we're not supposed to experience, more than likely those individuals don't know the word of God. And if they do know and not telling it, they still wrong. But man, we're going to suffer. But we can't put ourselves in a position and having a wasted want. And a wasted want is something that we're wanting that's not on God's need list. Because God is going to supply all of our needs. Now I can want whatever I want for my children, but this is the thing that helps me to stay in my lane. God has a plan for my daughter. God has a plan for my son. And there's nothing that I can do to change that, nothing. Whatever is for my son and for my daughter is for them. My job is to help them get closer to God so they can appreciate the needs that God will provide for them and to be aware of their wants, that if their wants are not parallel with God's need, it's a wasted want. So many of us can want for ourselves, we can want for each other. But again, if it's not parallel with the word of God, it's a wasted one. As humans, as parents, many of us are taking away the journey from ourselves and our children because we do not want to go through the suffering or see them suffer when it is part of our spiritual development. We have to be careful on that. And we have to let God take care of our loved ones like he take care of us. We have to let them know they got to go to God. Our job is to help them along the way. Our job is not to fix the problem because we can't fix what we did not create. We did not create each other. So we can't fix each other. Only God can do that. Only God can heal our broken spirit. 
We can't do that. So our want, we have to let them know that their want has to be on God's need list. We can do our very best in wanting and for them, but if they don't want for themselves, if they don't, if their want is not on God's need list, it's a wasted want. And we'll know whatever God's will will be, it's God's will. And we accept that. And we're still able to live with excitement and joy despite what we did not receive because we know that it wasn't on God's need list. Don't have a wasted want. We have to make sure that our want that we're striving for is parallel with God's need. Family, we got to bear one another's burdens. We have to be encouraging to one another. We have to feed each other, visit one another, clothe one another, help each other, but never, ever, 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 ever rule over each other because ruling over each other is not on God's needless. God is the only ruler over us. And we're only stewards of the things that we have. That's it. We're only stewards because we could take none of this with us, not even our family members. And that's real. If you want something that is greater than the word of God today, it's a wasted want. Our want God's want for us is to have a relationship with him. And our relationship is greater than the religion that we're a part of. Think about that. He want a relationship. You've heard the word today. It's up to you to believe what you've heard. Confess that Jesus is the Christ. That's who you're pledging your allegiance to, not to this land that we live in, you're pledging your allegiance to the one who created the land. We have to repent, turn away from the things that we've done wrong and be baptized for the remission of our sins. Hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. It's all throughout the Bible, multiple examples where people have done it. The same thing applies to us. That's what God wants for us. That's what his need is for us. Our want to have a relationship with him will definitely be parallel with his need and what he will provide for us. The question is, where do you stand? Is your want parallel with God's need? Only you can answer that question. Only God knows the truth. I encourage you on this day, if you have not obeyed the word of God, that you will obey it today before it's everlasting too late. And just know the things that we have here are just temporal. God wants us to experience eternal with him because we're going to we're going to spend eternity somewhere. The question is, will it be with him or not? But as long as our wants are parallel with God's need, we're already just catching up to what God already knows that's part of his plan for us. So I don't know about you, but I want to be on what God's needs list is. You know, there was a time where I wanted to travel all over the world because, you know, that's the thing that we were, you know, that we were shown, that we are shown on a regular basis. I want to go to Australia. I want to go to Italy. I want to go to France. I want to go to these different places, you know, different islands and experience the culture and everything. But, you know, if it never happened, it's okay. It's not part of God's needs list. It's just to say that I've been there. But if God is not going to get the glory in that, it's probably the reason why I haven't gone yet. And I'm okay with that because it's a wasted want at this point. But if the opportunity presents itself, you best believe I'm going. And if I'm going, you best believe God will get the glory more during that particular time than when it was and when I wanted to go. So I understand and I appreciate how God has revealed it to me on his needs that he provides for me and the wants that can be wasted. So I put those things to the side and I know God got me and God has you as well. The only way we can really appreciate it and know that is drawing closer to him every day, every day. And to the people 
when I talk, we talk about those individuals who are believers and those who believe, let me tell you something. It's different when you hear people say that they believe in God. Hey, even the devils believe in God. Read James chapter two, where the devils even believe in God. And they fear and they tremble. They respect him, right? They believe in God. But it's one thing that the devils won't do. And they won't act on the word of God. They will use it to their own benefit. Satan used the word of God against Jesus. So the devil knows the Bible. But there's a difference between those who believe in God and those who are believers. Don't be on the devil's level and just believe in God because that's what the devil does. Be a believer and act on what you believe because that's the thing that separates us from Satan. We're going to act on it and not just sit back and say, yeah, I believe in God and not do the work, not go through the suffering and do all the things that we talked about that will be identified as a wasted want. That's what the devil wants you to do. The devil wants you to have a wasted want and to live on wasted wants so much that you can't even appreciate God's need for you. So understand that there's a difference between those who believe in God and those who are believers. Believers act and believe. Those who believe, they just believe. Don't be on the devil's level and don't spend your time on wasted wants. Make sure that whatever it is that you want, that whatever it is that you desire, that is parallel to the word of God and his needs that he will supply for us. That's the way it's gonna work, whether we wanna accept it or not. It worked back then in the Bible, in the Old Testament, and it works today. Nothing changes about that. Make sure that we're in the right position. Then we can appreciate what happens to us in life more. Even though it may not look good, but just know that God's need for us and whatever it is that we're going through is greater than the want that we want to have. And the rest is history. Make a decision today. Obey to God. Obey God before it's everlasting too late. And you'll see things that you've never seen before. Things that he already has in store for you, but he's not going to reward us if we're disobedient to him. Let's keep that in mind. May God bless you. May God keep you. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to study your word. And we just pray, Father, that put ourselves in a position to where we embrace your needs rather than our wants. And Father, we know that you're a God who provide for all. And we know that you're a God that never made a mistake or lied to us, Father. And we know Father, that we, when we're closer to you, we can see all that you want us to see. Help us, Father, to have a better relationship with you in every which way. And we do everything that we can to give you all glory, honor, and praise in the things that we do. In the times we let you down, we ask that you please forgive us for any sins that we have committed. Father, we love you. We thank you for loving us. And we pray that from this point on that we will move forward in making you proud in the things that we do. We pray, Father, those individuals will obey the gospel before it's everlasting too late and that they will submit, comply, and be obedient to you for the rest of their lives. Father, we love you. Father, we thank you. And we ask that you continue to give us an opportunity to make you proud. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining. Please share this video if you can. Again, happy Mother's Day uh, to all the ladies uh, who are mothers on this day. All right. Um, Kirsten, Gary, Chris, uh, Christina, Jerry, Cheryl. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Remember to stay focused, stay in your lane so you can stay the course and just know in order for us to be great, we must communicate because God has a purpose for you just like he does for me, which means there is no need for us to compete. God has given us all enough air to breathe, which means there's enough blessings to receive. You need to ask yourself this question and all the things that you do if the answer to your why it does not include God, then why are you doing it? Guys, I appreciate you so much. I love you. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your life and let us collectively come together to give God all glory, honor, and praise in everything that we do 
and let's identify those things that we need from God compared to the wants that we have. And once we're able to have the right spirit of discernment in that area, we can see things a lot clearer. All right. Wasted wants. Let's not waste our time on them. Y'all have a good one. Take care.